while they preach the supremacy of the state. Now I am in control here. They are the focus of evil in the modern world. I can't hear you. Louder. And we'll survive the problems that we face right now. So help me God. After three on K News Radio, my name is Lee Rayburn. Happy Friday! Welcome to the last broadcast of 2011. Welcome to the show. And imagine my shock and amazement today when we actually get news out of the Coachella Valley on the last broadcast of the year. I was all set to do the year in review wrap up and take a look at the year that was. And we may get to some of that today, but I opened up the Desert Sun this morning to find a story that I know a little something about. And the funny thing is, what I know about the story seems to directly contradict the big, wonderful ah, ver- uh, headline extolling the virtues of the great work of the city of Desert Hot Springs. The headline reads, Desert Hot Springs Troubled Flamingo Hotel Deal May Prove Fruitful After All. I thought, well, that's interesting, because that's not what I know about that old pink albatross on Pearson Boulevard in Desert Hot Springs. Um, so I read the article. And the article by Kate McGinty in the, Desert Hot, uh, in the Desert Sun has absolutely nothing to do with the headline. So I've got to believe, because Kate did a pretty good, I, I, I enjoyed Kate McGinty's story. I like Kate McGinty's work. After all, Kate McGinty was the one reporter who had the opportunity to ask Mary Vaughn Parks why she signed all the checks but didn't see all the checks that she signed. Well, that's a question that rears its ugly head again, yet again today. In the, um, what, what, let's go through this. There was the, Palmwood development that was started by a developer who went by the name of Michael Crosby, but that wasn't his real name. His real name was Michael Krasasniak. He ended up uh, pleading uh, guilty uh, to grifting investors. Skyborn Development got a sweetheart deal from Desert Hot Springs, allowing them to get away with not uh, bonding any of the infra- uh, public infrastructure. So any sort of benefit to the community, well, that was pushed aside for the sake of a sweetheart deal for a developer. Then you had that convicted felon operating security contracts for the city of Desert Hot Springs out of a sitting city council member's home. And uh, what was his name again? Depends on who you ask. And then you had Tony Clark for the World Wellness and Music Festival. Remember that? The quarter of a million dollar non-compete, non-performance contract? Remember that? And remember when Mayor Park said, I didn't sign the checks. And then we got the checks with her signature on it. I didn't see them. Signatures put there automatically, making her the rubber stamp mayor of the Coachella Valley. Here we go again. How many times do you want to go through this before somebody says something's got to give? Somebody's got to go. Here's another quarter of a million boondoggle, another sweetheart deal to a developer, another developer that has gone MIA, completely gone. What's his name? Does it really matter? Probably wasn't his real name anyway. Brian C. Biscobi in the Desert Sun today uh, signed an agreement with the city of Desert Hot Springs in June of 2008. That agreement gave Brian C. Biscobi a quarter of a million dollars of Desert Hot Springs taxpayer dough. For the Flamingo Hotel on Pearson Boulevard, which really needed some work, but it was open, as I understand it, this was before I got here, it was open before uh, Biscobi was in line to buy it. The city gave Biscobi a quarter of a million dollars to purchase it. Biscobi went in there and tore everything up, and then Biscobi disappeared. Well, that's never happened in Desert Hot... Oh, yeah, wait. (laughs) So the city okayed a quarter of a million dollar deal to this Biscobi character. Well, that's never happened... Oh, yeah, right. Seriously? Again? The headline's all rosy and upbeat and happy and go lucky and, hey, the Flamingo's coming back next year. Although in Kate McGinty's article, there is absolutely nothing, nothing other than um, city manager Rick Daniels saying, yeah, it could open next year. Well, city manager Rick Daniels has to say that because this was city manager Rick Daniels' deal. This is his baby. He did this deal. I've got the agreement right here. It's got his signature, his work all over it. A quarter of a million dollars to somebody who either does not exist or apparently exists no more. An interesting thing about the Flamingo, what did the city get for their quarter of a million dollars? Now, it was a quarter of a million dollars cash, but they also were going to give Mr. Biscobi, if that is his real name, and we've got past precedents to suggest there may be some um, investigation that's worthwhile in this, 
What did the city get? Well, um, it's worth noting that like the World Wellness and Music Festival, the city got bupkis. Nothing. Is there a deed? A uh, title of... Uh, was the city of Desert Hot Springs ever in line to receive this property if Biscobi, I don't know, just so happened to disappear and couldn't be found anywhere on the face of the earth, which just so happened to have happened? No, not from anything I've seen so far. And we'll go through the agreement today. We'll go through the story today. Because, again, over and over again, we see Desert Hot Springs handing over hard-earned money from the people of Desert Hot Springs for sweetheart deals that ends up disappearing into thin air. And then the city, shrugging their shoulders and saying, well, we can't look back. We've got to move forward. But when they move forward, they just do the da same damn thing all over again. When is somebody going to say, enough? Something's got to change. Something's got to give. Somebody's got to go. And I couldn't help but wonder, with the rosy, wonderful, upbeat headline today in the desert sun, Desert Hot Springs Troubled Flamingo Hotel deal may, be, uh, may prove fruitful after all. That there's, I, I gotta believe at some point somebody's gotta look into whatever relationships past or present may have been between the city manager of Desert Hot Springs and the Desert Sun. Somebody should look into that. It's not gonna be me. It's not gonna be me. But I look forward to somebody doing that. Ha! <laughs> Because while the headline is so rosy and upbeat and optimistic, the story explains another quarter of a million boond uh, dollar boondoggle for the city of Desert Hot Springs. It's Tony Clark all over again. Michael Crosby, a.k.a. Michael Krasasniak, all over again. Palmwood, Skyborn, Jewish Temple. Where do you want me to stop? See, my job is to report it. And if you want to shoot the messenger, by all means. And it's not like people aren't taking pot shots at me, and that's fine. But I'm trying to bring the information to you, and I have the city's agreement with Mr. Biscobi. I have the receipt. And yes, I have the check from the city of Desert Hot Springs to Biscobi's company to the tune of a quarter of a million dollars. Right here. Guess whose signature's on it? Yeah, that's right. Yvonne Parks. There it is. She signed the quarter of a million dollars, dated June 13th, 2008. Now, in the story in the Desert Sun today, Rick Daniels wants you to know this happened before he got to town, which blows my mind, because as I look at the agreement here, it just so happens to have been signed by Rick Daniels. How did he do that? How did he do that? I am flummoxed. He didn't do the deal according to the Desert Sun. The Desert Sun took him at his word, but the signature on the deal happens to be Rick Daniels. I think Mayor Parks forged his signature. That must be what it is, because she's so reluctant to have her signature on anything anymore. Well, I've got the check, quarter of a million dollars to a man who either doesn't exist or apparently exists no more. Quarter of a million dollars. And it's got Yvonne Parks' signature on it. Let us let Yvonne Parks explain her signature one more time. First of all, as the mayor, my electronic signature is on every check. I don't see the checks. I don't physically sign the checks. If you'll notice on that check that you have, there is another signature, a physical signature on there, and it's probably our finance director. They both look like they, they both look to be rubber stamped. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know about the other one. I know that mine <laughs> is an electronic signature. Okay. The only and I don't see the invoices you? prior to prior to the check being written. I do see them as part of the register of demands, which comes before the council and is approved by the entire council. So you did sign on these checks, though. That is your signature. It's my my electronic signature. What's the difference? Well, there's a big difference. There's a big difference. Go ahead. You know, I did not physically see the check. I did not physically sign it. But that doesn't necessarily make the quarter of a million dollar mistake any better. That was another okay. quarter of a million dollar you mistake. You wanted an answer as to why the signature was on there. I called simply to okay. clarify. Okay. You can check with the other cities to see if their mayors have an electronic signature that is on pre-stamped pre on every single check that goes out of the city. So you did not... See, see, see if whether or not the other mayors 
whose signature is electronically placed on checks actually ever physically sign a check. So you don't feel as though... Then you can come back and talk to me about what we do in Desert Hot Springs. So you don't feel as though you misled the Desert Sun in saying that you don't sign any of these checks, you don't oversee them? I did not mislead them. I did not mislead them. I did not physically sign the checks. Well, I don't, I, I, I'm just not... There is a difference between seeing a check and signing it, physically signing it, and not seeing the check and having your electronic signature placed on it as a matter of routine. Okay, I just want to go back to your statement here for a second uh, from the Desert Sun or MyDesert.com with Kate McGinty I last did week. not sign the check. Okay. My signature, uh, maybe I should have gone one step further and said my electronic signature is on there. I did not physically sign the check. Nor did you approve this? And that's going to be the end of the discussion. I'm sure you wish it were so, Mayor Parks. And it may be electronic signatures from the rest of the mayors around the valley. However, they don't seem to be handing out a quarter of a million dollars to every con man that comes to town. This seems to be the great difference here, Mayor Parks, that some mayors are watching over their cities. Others are just rubber stamping the checks and hope no hoping nobody else checks. That, Madam Mayor, happens to be my job, and I happen to be pretty good at it. I've caught you again. How many times do I need to catch you before somebody says, hey, maybe we should change the way business is done in Desert Hot Springs? Because they weren't the only one. To be clear here, they weren't the only community in the Coachella Valley that hired the convicted felon to operate security equipment while operating out of the Desert Hot Springs City Council member's home. Indio did as well. But as soon as Indio found out the mistake they had made, they changed their entire contracting system. I sat down and spoke with Indio City Manager Dan Martinez for the better part of an hour, as he explained to me the changes they had implemented immediately upon learning that they had contracted out a convicted felon for security system contracts in Indio. That's the difference. You make the mistakes and say you want to move on without changing a damn thing. And here I see in the desert sun today what appears to be a very good story about the Flamingo Hotel until I actually read it. And then I realize that I've actually got the check for a quarter of a million dollars from the city of Desert Hot Springs to Mr. Bascobi, if that is his real name, signed by Yvonne Parks. But let's be clear here. She does not sign the checks! 19 minutes after 3. You've got to be kidding me. I know there are folks who are insistent that Desert Hot Springs is going the right way. But if you can argue to me how millions and millions of dollars being, well, we'll say more than a million dollars just to be on the safe side, being funneled out of city taxpayer dollars just given to who knows who, how, what, for whatever reason. And that is a good question. What is the reason these alleged con men keep making out like bandits in Desert Hot Springs? I can think of two hypotheses to operate from. One, extreme incompetence. Two, gross corruption. Is there a third that I'm missing? 760-416-8475. The last day of the year, and Desert Hot Springs stepped in it again. Man, you know, maybe if you changed the way you operated, I wouldn't have to hit you over the head every other day. I don't want to talk about you today. I've got the whole year of 2011 to cover. And yet, here you go, all over again, Deja vu all over again. And the way the city manager today tries to throw the city council under the bus completely belies what you just heard from Madam Mayor. She's got nothing to do with the day-to-day -day operations of the city. So if Rick Daniels wants to blame anybody, or anybody other than himself for this rotten deal, for every taxpayer in Desert Hot Springs, I don't know, I don't know who else you can blame.